Try six years younger. No, I like it. Yeah, they were like six years. That down there is like ten or ten. I think like six years. That's what kept me so long. Come on, bro. Right, you just squeeze in there. Like, you kind yeah. of go that direction. Right, that's a solid 62. I'm solid 62. I'm here with a um, Jiu Jitsu practitioner, a team owner, and ex member of the Orleans Fitz family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Kieran Davin. Um, how are you, Kieran? All good, yeah. Thanks for having me. No bother, man. No bother. We're here at the World Championships for Juveniles IMF. So, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So, um, you started off MMA originally. MMA originally, yeah. Uh, kind of like always a back of the heart. You know what I mean? Kind of uh, dabbled in MMA for a few years and then kind of find the, found the love for pro grappling and competing grappling and that and just kind of took off from there. Okay. And. <laughs> you, you're coming up on Polaris, you've been on Polaris yeah. already. So, like, I would know a lot of guys in the Jiu Jitsu scene, and you were always on the Jiu Jitsu scene, but the past few years you've seen to really broke out, and yeah. a lot of people are going, fucking care on that. Yeah. What um, would you put that down to? I uh, mean, a couple of different things. Like, I'd say, what, like, obviously, like, uh, the obvious is just training, training hard, training consistent. Hard. I'd say just being down in the Midlands, just kind of being outside out of mind a little bit. Yes. You know what I mean? Obviously, like Dublin, there's more eyes in Dublin, yeah, it's yeah. the capital and everything else, and you know what I mean? It obviously gets more attention. And sorry, because there's good lads up there. But I think that, like, just the Jiu Jitsu scene is growing in the Midlands now, so there's more clubs popping open. So then there's more eyes kind of just like looking down at the Midlands as well. So I think it's a bit of that as well. Um, and then just probably just putting myself out there more and competing a lot more. And, you know, just I suppose coaching competitions a lot more. So just I think more people just kind of hear your name and just kind of like, oh, I keep an eye out for this lad, uh, this competition, whatever else. So, so you know, and at the moment, what would be your typical week like train starting off, say on a Monday? Monday, a typical week? Monday morning. Every 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 Monday morning for the last, I'd say like since COVID hit, like say I've changed my training around. So nine o'clock on a Monday morning, it's strength and conditioning. So it's, it's strength conditioning with uh, one of the lads who's one of the strength conditioning coaches in the gym. He's actually a, a qualified, he's a degree in sports science. It's very good. Shane Smith, so we give Shane Smith a shout out. Yep, sure. Yeah, and give out to me if I don't give him a shout out. So, uh, yeah, so we do strength conditioning from about 9 to, I'd say, 9 o'clock till about, say, 10.45. And then I'd normally go in and I teach Jiu Jitsu. I get a little bit of food into me, teach Jiu Jitsu at 11 o'clock, and I, I train in that class as well. So I have. I have two training sessions done by one o'clock that day, yeah, which is good. And then I go home, I get the food, study for college, study, you know, study jiu jitsu, watch my mate, kind of prepare classes for the week and that. And then uh, spend a little bit of time with family, back into the gym that night, and then I train again at seven o'clock. So that either be uh, jiu jitsu, could be could be technical, could be rounds, depending on how the morning went, or it could be a bit of wrestling. So kind of most days look like that. Okay. So three three heavy strength conditioning days. And I would do, uh, I, on average, I do two Jiu Jitsu sessions a day, Monday to Friday, and then I do uh, kind of just one heavy Jiu Jitsu session on Saturday. Okay. And I take Sunday off completely. Okay. Like, you know, well, I used to be bad for not taking Sundays off. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I just felt that I was probably doing more harm than good. So I'm kind of reaping rewards out training a little bit by taking a little bit more rest than that. So. And, and Sunday is a good family day. Yeah, family, and I have a little lad, he's three and a half now, and that's what's supposed to get a little bit older, your priorities now kind of change a bit, and, and it's all about balance, you know, balance the gym, balance, like, uh, being a competitor, and then balance, like, say, the, you know, my, the most important thing to me is obviously my, my son and my, my fiance, Jamie, you know, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that's how a typical week works, or it looks anyway, and then teaching a few different classes and that in between that, so, so I'm trying to balance a lot of stuff at the moment. Yeah, no, good stuff, stuff. good yeah. stuff. I know, I, I, like, you were in Grapple, What's the, the fella from Liverpool? Grapple uh, Grapple Fest. Fest. Yeah, Grapple that's Fest. a great show. Figure four promotions. Grapple yes, Fest, yeah. I've seen yeah. you on that. I've seen you on that, yeah. and then I've seen you on Polaris, obviously. And this team's coming up. Yes, yeah, squad. Team. Yeah, that's a big it's one. A big yeah, team. yeah. So this is my second time to compete on Polaris squad. So I think it's my fourth or fifth time on Polaris, uh, and this is my second time to do squad. So in October, it was like our team Ireland in the UK taking on uh, Team Europe. Uh, we won like one 0 Tom Halpin from Ireland got the submission. I think he, he uh, hit triangle or something like yeah. that. Slick, uh, slick enough submission. And then now we're taking on Team Ireland and UK are taking on uh, Team USA, yes. which is obviously you know the Team for the killers. But I believe that 
we have a great team and on any night anyone can submit anyone you know, so. yeah. no it's, it's, it's good to see me from a, a general fan and yeah. a practitioner to see like Irish boys going yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Is, we're good enough here yeah, yeah. we were talking about earlier on but sometimes we, we self sabotage by calling them boys. Yeah, you know, yeah. And see, Larry, you just try to be kind of like humble. Yeah. Here, it's like, yeah, it's just the way we're kind of brought up. Like, I don't know. I think it might be, might step, I could be, I'm only guessing, but stem back to kind of like the Catholic church days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd always remember my granny and granddad and that one, they lived out in the country and that was all children. The old the thing back then was like children were meant to be seen, not heard. Yeah. And it's like, shh, don't say anything like that. You know, yeah. the, the priest will hear you, or the guard will hear you, or the yeah. doctor, or yeah. you know, the way it used to be in Ireland years ago. Mm-hmm. So I'd say there's a little bit of still in the culture and that, but you yeah. see young lads start to come through, they're more confident and yeah. not being afraid to express who they are, you know, mm-hmm. whether that's through social media or through, you know, just, just their style or whatever it might be, you know, in competition. And that. So I think it's a good thing. No, it's, it's good. And, and then with guys like you, with Mark's feelings being on it, Darius being on it, there's other guys, Paul Redmond's being yeah, on it, Redmond, team, Tom Halpin, Tom Halpin. Yeah. and it's, it's, it's kind of, other guys are kind of going, you, you were making it easy for other blokes, well, well, well they done it, yeah. so why can't we? 100% Because there's a lot of nipping, 100% like, to go on to it as well, you know what I want to do? Yeah, there's like 20, there's like 20, 21 year olds, like around Ireland, like not, not just from my club, but like, so just even off, off the top of my head, there's like a, there's Jack Dolan set from my gym, he's a hardball. There's Mo from the East Coast. There's uh, John Luca from Royal Grappling Academy. You have Mohammed from yeah, SPG Ireland. Yeah. There's, there's loads of lads out in uh, Jack Armstrong up there in SPG Balanan. There's that's the lads I'm just kind of thinking of yeah, talking yeah. around around the 20, 21 years of age. Like, they're killers. Yeah. And you give them another, like, say, two, three, four years now, and they've, like, even more competition experience. They're going to surpass everything that any of us have ever done, yeah. you know, and, and more. And then yeah. their students are. Whoever comes after them will do better, and that's just the way it goes. So, for 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 us, we can we can only do what what we can do with the coaching that we have and, and that we've had over the years. We're, we're obviously trying to get better at competing or competing and being better coaches, and that's going to bring on the young lads, and then they're going to bring on their young lads and so on. But I think Irish Jiu Jitsu is on the rise. You know, yeah, yeah. I think there's a great standard all across the board, like all gyms north and south. You know, it's great to see. Like he, even a little thing is when I started, how it's advanced. Like if you went near anyone's leg apart from the step yeah, yeah. straight foot lock it was like <laughs> yeah, what are you doing yeah, yeah. now it's like you've two team and four team yeah, yeah. and very you know 50-50 and that's top one from one yeah, side yeah. and you're like I'm on to the other leg yeah, yeah. that's like, a different level now isn't it yeah. it's, it's now it was like the straight foot lock if you went for that JC's he's really advanced yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So now it's, it's just young as the only well, if you think like, about it it should be that way but it was like say you're, it's your body against their body mm-hmm. and, and when you look I know it's easy to look back in hindsight and that ball we have is hindsight like like not attacking the legs yeah, yeah. is it doesn't make sense now I've made the mistake in past matches even a match on the Polaris I think it was 10 or 11 I was just solely for focus I had a match and I was solely focused on just attacking the legs yeah. and where like for me like I, I, I'd like to think that I'm, I'm well around a good kind of you know passing game and you know, good back game and whatever else and, and your regular submissions from mountain guard yeah. and everything else but for me what happened it was like I kind of fell in love with the leg locks because if I'm honest I had success in competition and it was like the easiest route to victory yes. but like sometimes and I, just, I think this just comes with experience you have to know when to cut your losses and say like leg locks aren't working out two yeah. three minutes in the match start wrestling from here or start getting top pressure and I think that just comes with experience and that, yeah. you know what I mean so um, it's just, if you don't put yourself out there you might never learn those like mistakes yeah, yeah. or uh, or taking a long time to learn that in the gym so mm-hmm. I think that's that's what competition does for me it makes me realise what works at a higher level mm-hmm. and then it allows me to teach that type of stuff to my lads because you know some people kind of get if you, if you don't compete or you haven't competed you can teach some moves yeah. that maybe that would maybe work on the regional scene or the lower level regional scene but you go to like European scene, scene or world scene or whatever it might be it's like it's literally at the top of the pyramid of the techniques that work like to catch a legitimate black belt with, you know mm-hmm. what I mean so uh, yes, that's definitely what competing has done for me. No, no, good yeah, stuff, good stuff. And um, the gym, so you would have started off your gym, would have been, obviously you started off in a small town, small would have been yeah. hard to, yeah, yeah. and now it seemed to go on from strength to strength. Yeah, the, like a quick, quick rundown of the story, the way I set up the gym was basically, uh, so I, when I left school, my dad was a, a builder and he kind of pushed me into getting a trade. Okay. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to do something with sports, so Long story short, served my time as an apprentice bricky. Uh, spent a few years in the buildings. Didn't didn't really like it because it just it just wasn't wasn't for me. You know, I was labouring 
on a building site from I'd say about 10 or 12 years old. It's helped me dial, you know, for a couple of weeks going up and that type of stuff. But uh, got me trade, the recession happened in 2008. And then for me, that was my way out. Yes. You know what I mean? And I opened up the gym. I was on the dole at the time, because we're all let go as Ricky's and that. And I opened up the gym on the back to work scheme. And like this year, I was on like 100 and, it was like 140 or 150 quid a week or whatever. So for me, when I opened up the gym, I rented a little small space above the boxing club for like 300 quid a month. Like, I, all I wanted to do was be able to pay my fees in SPG. Yes. Like, what the job was trained during the day. I wasn't, I wasn't driven by money. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? It was like, if I, if I had enough move, food to, or enough food in my belly and enough like diesel in my car, be able to pay me rent. You know, I didn't have a young lad at the time or anything like that. So it was just, that was my purpose, just train full time, make a couple of quid and just get by. Yeah. And then see where it could, it could take me. Long story short, I just kept kept just adding to the gym and building to the gym, and it took snowball effect. And then now we have like a, a great facility, a really a removed facility, and I'm really proud of what we've built. You know, I mean, from Fuji mats and full strength and conditioning CrossFit area with a rock climbing wall and cage, and you know, with a little chill out area to hold on. So I'm really proud of what we built, and we built that bit by bit uh, over nine years. So open nine years next week. So yeah, there's well, fifteen thousand well. people in Tullamore. But for me, I was like, if I couldn't get a couple of hundred people that, could, or that would want to come and train with me or train with the team and that, well then I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. It's not the town that, you know, so if, if all we need is a couple of hundred members just to keep the thing afloat and then, you know, to, to make it, you know, prosper and, yeah. and, and get better than that, so. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. I like hearing that. I haven't been down to our gym. You said when well, Max are doing a bit of it, when we go back, a little float about it. we're going up to Team Torres, Daily. you know, the East Coast, over. yeah, yeah, more or less. There's an open invitation anytime, few, few rounds, and yeah. we get down 100%. We get down for that anyway, you know. And um, Jack Dowling, he's a big boy these days, <laughs> eight, eight, <six> kilos. <laughs> he's a big lad. He's moving up, and I just keep moving up with the fear of like having, having him getting bigger than me. Looking so, at him there, yeah, there on Instagram, going, oh, he's a beast. Like, the, the thing about Jack is like when he does something. He does it to 100%. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, he's he's following like a, a, like a proper lifting program. He's looking like, you know, prop, like proper diet, the whole lot. So, he gives it 100%. But, yeah, he's, he's around 86 kilos and hopefully he doesn't get any bigger. Anyway, he's a handful as, he, as it is. And he's only 21 years of age. So he's only going to get better, you know. So, it's. And that's to, to be good at any sport, you have to be all in. You have to be all in. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's 100% yeah. in every area, in yeah. your lifestyle, in what you eat, in what you train. Who you hang around with, what you, what you read, what you, it's everything. Yeah. It's not just on the mats. Definitely, it's yeah. It's, you know what? It's, it's, it's easy to do, it's easy to be all in on the mats, right? Yeah. And some people aren't all in on the mats, but it is easy. The hardest thing, like you're only on the mats for a couple of hours a day. Yeah. So say you're on the mats for four hours a day or whatever it might be, there's under 20, 20 hours outside the gym. So what are you doing? Or like, are, you, are, you, are you drinking or are you acting the bollocks? Are you, are you sleeping or you know, are you eating right or yeah. whatever it might be? A lot of people will turn around and say, "Oh, I'm not eating shit. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing this and that." And you know, yeah. they're not like they're not uh, they're not looking after themselves fully in that. But like, um, it's the ones that do give it all they can off the mat, like studying jiu jitsu, you know, watching your wrestling, like looking at your own game, and, and trying to eat right, trying to do strength condition, follow strength condition program. I think they're the ones that do the best. Some people are obsessed, and you can't you can't really fake it, right? You're all in, or you know. Yeah, yeah. Some people do try fake it, but you know, you, you get found out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you meet, you end up meeting someone, especially in MMA, that's all in. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want that. You don't want, like, say we're at the, obviously at the IMAX now. You don't want to be this young man that's kind of like just doing it just for for Instagram, say. Yeah. And then you meet one of the Dagestanis or you know Russians or something out there, mm -hmm. and they're all in. They're literally doing this to get to the UFC to provide a you know future for their family and whatever else, you know. Because that's the way them, some of them young lads are thinking. Yeah. You know, some of those Russians and they want to be world champions. I was talking to uh, some of the Chechen coaches outside yesterday. Now they're attached to the Russian team, but I think they brought 10 fellas from their village down with them. And I was like, 10 blocks from your village? That'd be like you bringing 10 people from SBG. Like to high level lads to the world, and, yeah. And they've meddled and stuff. And mm -hmm. guys, I, I said, What's the hell? And he goes, We wrestle, we run, we eat, no distractions in the village. <laughs> you know I mean? I've seen that. <laughs> no distractions. Yeah, I trained out in uh, I was out in Thai Yeah. You know, I was out there I was out there four or five times. I was out there one time in particular and Khabib's team was out there. Khabib wasn't there himself, so it was like your man at Zubar and it was like another lad Maribek and yeah. a few lads that kind of fought in the UFC and that. They weren't at the UFC at the time. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I was training in Thai Gumu Thai and Paquette Top Team. And I was training a lot out there, like this is when I was doing MMA, so I was training like uh, Thai boxing in the morning at seven, uh, it'd be like jujitsu down straight on like at nine or something mm -hmm. like that. 
uh, I'd eat a bit of food and then I got back down that night and I might do like some uh, jiu jitsu like drills and then wrestling. So I was training like I'd say on average three times a day. Sorry, uh, I, I was doing a private in between, okay. like a private Thai boxing session. Yeah. So I was getting three to four sessions in, you know, as much as I could for a month. Those lads were out training with me. Like, so I'd be sitting down for dinner yeah. or, or lunch, like say during the day, and I'd have two sessions done. And I just look down the street, and these lads just be running the roads. Yeah, yeah. And then I drive up later on, and say during the day, I drive by in an old head and be in another gym, like Red Dragon across the road, doing Thai boxing. Yeah. Then they'd be back in with me that night, and we'd be doing wrestling and get top team or something like that. Yeah. And I thought I was training hard. Like, I, don't, I don't even know how they can they can keep that work rate mm -hmm. without getting tired. But I suppose that's the way they've been they've been brought up in it. So it's definitely real, you know, the way they live. And like you said, there's, there's probably less distractions over there. I know, you know. we're here, right? Two of us are melting in AC. And I'm sitting out the back there, I believe, melting, drinking a Fanta lemon. And I'm looking up on the roof, and there's a bloke running around, a Russian <laughs> running around, yeah. a Spessy one, and a air from It's about 37. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. bitch on the roof, I'm just like, that's. They're all in. They're all in. They probably don't even have fucking Instagram. No, that's <laughs> the thing, isn't it? Yeah. They and probably don't even have fucking Instagram. Yeah, and I'd say if they do get it, it's for when they turn professional and, or, you know, or a good high level amateur to, to promote themselves or whatever else, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, the standard's very solid out there. Like we were watching the kids and that this mm -hmm. morning. But, you know, nothing we were just saying before we came on, like, nothing that the Irish lads can't no. no. deal with. You know, the Irish yeah. lads are every bit as good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and the culture is different in Ireland. I think, like, the difference I've seen in the hotel and that. Say with the Irish lads and say the Russians, for example, or lads from Ukraine, is like the, the, the Russians are not very stoic. Mm -hmm. you know, where the Irish lads will kind of wave and have to crack. And yeah, yeah. When it's time to fight, they'll fight. And yeah. you know, I like that. Maybe that's just because I'm, I've been brought up in that culture and, yeah. and whatever else. But then, yeah, I think the Irish lads have a great chance of meddling. A couple of lads in the semi finals now after lunch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a couple of young lads. And then a big day tomorrow and an even bigger day then. Uh, Sunday, I have two lads on, Jordan Sully, Max is on, yeah. and uh, Bernie Ward's on as well from, from my gym, so it should be, should be good. Yeah, and yeah. Alex Kiel as well. Yeah, yeah. Mount is good. A lot of good lads on, yeah. yeah. Mount yeah. should be should be a few medals coming Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Crossed, and and big team as well, there's a 20 yeah, big team, and, and super, like, super experience for them. Yeah, even if done they, right. Even if they come away with a couple of matches yeah. each. You're mixing with the best youths in that the world, world yeah. and you see, oh, this is how you do yeah. it. So there's no, no competition in Ireland or regional competition that can match it. Well. You're getting experience, experience, years of experience in a weekend or in a day. You know, so like I said, what one of our lads said, Jordan Scully, or um, not Jordan actually, Bernie Ward has eight matches for gold. Savage. You know, like so he like he could potentially leave here mm -hmm. as. A and O, or you know, yeah, maybe yeah. he won all his fights. Yeah. Jordan, I think, has five fights for, for gold. Yeah. And so you can leave here, like, say, five and O. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a young amateur, yeah, yeah. Else, savage. You know I mean? savage. We're going to end it at that because we have to go back to the top. Oh, Cheer on, Kieran. Yeah. Yeah. Kieran, thank you so much. No Give problem. Kieran a follow on the Instagram, and we'll be down for them low. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it. Nice, nice one, man. <laughs> nice one for that.